Hello. Uh, after a long speech, uh, <laughs> finally I got the mic. <laughs> so uh, people uh, call me the militant atheist, uh, the most militant. So I don't know why people call me that. But, and many people ask me, many several times they ask me why you became an atheist. I uh, always told them, oh, okay, I read Quran, so I became an atheist. So that is the reason uh, I. I always tell people that read Quran, read Quran. If you really want to be an atheist, read Quran and Bible and other stuff. So, uh, Quran is uh, obviously my most in inspirational book that made me uh, like uh, Asif Mohyuddin. Uh, so, I am very grateful to Muhammad and um, Islam and Quran. So, uh, I. Uh, I, I am very happy to be here today. In 2010, I organized one meeting of uh, free thinkers uh, like atheists, uh, agnostics, or any, any other thing, non-believers in Dhaka, Bangladesh. That was the first uh, meeting of non-believers in Dhaka. Uh, Parvaj was there at uh, that time. And um, uh, 34 people came that day. Uh, when I started uh, writing about atheism or I uh, was talking about atheism, I thought that I am the only one person in the world who don't believe these stupid ideas. But uh, day by day I found some people that, okay, uh, some people, they also don't believe, uh, they are like me. And I came from a very uh, Muslim family, very strong Muslim family, and it was a very uh, hard journey to come here. Uh, I don't want to uh, share with you my experience, my personal experience, but I can tell you shortly something that I was uh, I was attacked several times. In 2013 the attack was very brutal and I was um, police liked me very much in Bangladesh police. They always ask me to come to the office and to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing is, uh, uh, in 2013, I went to the police station and I was debating with 18 police and four of them become atheists later. <laughs> so that was the good thing. So I uh, told police that, okay, uh, invite me anytime. I can come to your office and we can discuss about atheism and uh, criticism of Islam. And I was in prison for a few times. Uh, I just want to tell you a small story in the prison when I was in prison for the second time. Uh, I was in prison for blasphemy. Uh, the case is still going on and I maybe they will punish me for 10 years imprisonment. I don't know, but any, anyway. Uh, when I was in prison for second time, I met my attackers who attacked me in 2013. And that was a, um, there was three persons who attacked me and three of them were in the prison that day. And one of them, he was like 23 years old, young boy. And he called me from upstairs. Oh, I said, hi, do you remember me? I said, no, who are you? Then he said, it's me. I said, oh, you, you are. Oh, let's come down, then we can talk. Then we talked for uh, like um, um, one and a half hour and we eat something together and we discussed about um, how many virgin he will get uh, in heaven, yeah. And he told me 72. I said, uh, is, is it a fixed number or you can ask for more some, someday? And we, I was making fun, I was making joke with him and but he was very strong about his ideology. He, and I asked him that, uh, what you are going to do when uh, you will come, you will go out of the prison. He told me he will try again to kill me. Then I said, okay, fine, let's see what happened. And that time I realized that uh, I am not the victim of Islam. I am not the uh, primary victim of Islam or the other atheist blogger you saw, they are not the primary victim of Islam. That boy, that boy is the victim of Islam and uh, political Islam and there are a lot of other boys like him. They want to get the virgins in heaven, whatever they want to do in heaven, I don't know what they will 
what they are going to do in heaven, how they can handle 72. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him, how, how you are going to handle 72? I cannot handle one. <laughs> Um, but the thing is, he was very strong, and uh, he was he was also born in a very Islamic uh, family, very strong Islamic family. And uh, I was also born in a very Islamic, strong Islamic family. But I read some books. I found a library. I read some books about philosophy and history. But he never got that chance. So I felt very uh, sad later that uh, if he was born in Europe, in a modern society, if he uh, had a good education and a good family, he, he could do something else. He could be a philosopher or scientist. But now he's a terrorist. He's a uh, radical Islamist. He wants to kill people for Allah. Uh, this is... Uh, uh, this is obviously this is stupid, but uh, somehow you have I have to understand his uh, problem, where he came from. So uh, I think that uh, to uh, discuss about me, what I experienced, I want to discuss about that boy or many boys like him or girls like him who are going to join ISIS or Al Qaeda, even from Europe. There are uh, many people are going, going to join ISIS now. And we should do something about it. Uh, and we should think about it. We should discuss about these things. We should not um, uh, censor ourselves because some people will be hurt or some people will be offended. Mm -hmm. We should not censor our uh, discussion to uh, comfort some people. We should always discuss these things. And I always wanted to create a space where, where uh, I can discuss, we can discuss. So that is uh, my, uh, I want to do what I want to do, is to create a space where uh, nothing will be censored, everybody can speak uh, what they think. That is what I do. In, uh, and uh, I had to leave the country because, um, like, 500,000 people came to the street with my poster and my name and they announced that this person had to be slaughtered in public place. And many, uh, many newspapers, they published my big, big pictures and uh, with the title, Number One Enemy of Islam. And uh, yeah, that is okay. I don't complain about these things. <laughs> <laughs> that happens uh, with activism. When I started uh, my activism like 18 years ago, I became an atheist uh, when I was 13 years old. And when I was 15 years old, that from that day I, I started discussing these things in public debate and, uh, and writing some uh, articles in the newspapers. Uh, so that day I, I, I knew that uh, someday they will try to kill me, they will try to attack me. So I never complained. It's okay. It's fine. Uh, what we are dealing with is a very radical ideology and uh, we have to deal with the consequences. So for me, I am uh, okay uh, and I don't want to uh, portray myself as a victim. I want to portray that boy as a victim of Islam and ready every radical ideology. Thank you so much. So, please allow me to ask the first question. Was it at least a very good picture of you? <laughs> sure were, you were you happy about that picture? Were you happy? Uh, that was, uh, 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 many years ago, I posted a picture with a uh, bottle of uh, vodka <laughs> in my Facebook that, oh, I'm drinking this bottle tonight. So they took that picture. <laughs> they took that picture, and that picture is now in every Islamist computer. You can find this picture in 
every Bangladeshi Islamist uh, blogger or uh, any any anyone. And they make a folder in the computer. This is the devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they posted that picture everywhere. I uh, in 2013 I saw my picture everywhere in the street. They posted my picture uh, with the bottle. And uh, from, I, I had vodka. Yeah, that was uh, that was not very uh, expensive vodka. I thought, <laughs> okay, that picture. Oh no, we should uh, use some other pictures. <laughs> Something expensive. <laughs>